So we're back on the feeder, feeder rods today um, for this two pound roach that seems to elude Alex. So that's in the plans. Always will be to be get it, I suppose. We do have our, our sleeper rods, as we call it, on the pike. I've got two with a, a, a roach dead bait and a, a mackerel. And on the other rod, Alex has got one out there with a, a sardine, is it? Yeah, sardine out. So the other thing we're going to try with this edit is, is as I say, something slightly different. I've been asked by many a folk, and what, well, how, how did you get into fishing? And I'll always say, watching John Wilson. And one of the things that I always loved about go fishing was how in the first 10 minutes he was fly fishing for trout and then the adverts would come on, he'd nick for a pee in the toilet or something, grab a cup of tea and then you would, he would be fishing for skate. <laughs> um, then he'd go for another advert and then he'd be back fishing for pike or something. It was uh, the amount of options, being an all-round angler, the options it gives you. If the river's no good, you can come to the loch. If the loch's no good, too high, you can go sea fishing. If the wind's too crap, you can go to the other side of the country. All these options that you have. Uh, so we'll maybe touch on that throughout the day. Touch on our trip last week, which was to Loch Etif, which was absolutely Baltic. Probably the coldest fishing session I think I've ever had. With that said, we did have some malfunctioning with the cameras and the microphones. So some of that footage, it didn't quite pick up the audio, and so we'll see what we can we can mishmash together with this with this current episode of Angling 360. So I've still to catch a fish. Alex has caught a couple of roaches, as you see, as you seen. So hopefully the day improves. There we go. Taking a wee bit of time to get them going, but that's what we came for. Quality winter roach. A few more like that would be nice. A two pounder would be nice. <laughs> 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 well, Well, it's roach that we're after, and they're few and far between, but there's also plenty of these wee guys in here. <laughs> A little rough. Cool looking wee fish. Edible? Probably. <laughs> This is not going to plan, <laughs> which is surprising because we turned up, seen there's a, a good bit of colour in the water, and that's worked in our favour in the past. Uh, the river that runs into the loch, uh, just up the shore a wee bit there, is in spate just now, so it is pushing a good bit of water through, so there is a nice toe and it's nice and coloured. And I turned up this morning expecting to bag up, I think I've had five or six fish. 
the fire six fish more than Gordon's had, mind you, so <laughs> doing all right. But yeah, it's it's tough. But we're going to stick it out. We always do. Uh, and while we try to winkle out a couple more roach, have a look at how we got on last weekend when it was equally as cold. <laughs> Not at least it was cold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we managed a couple of fish. So while we brave this, check out last week's adventures on Loch Etiv. Trust me, don't let the blue skies fool you. I've seen that comment a few times this week on Facebook. That is bloody freezing. I think it was about minus five there or thereabouts. Honestly, points in face, numb. The first drop down into about 100 feet of water. 200 feet of water. 200 feet of water. A couple of fish are on. It looks like we've got a couple of wee pups. Here we go. the biggest bird dog I've ever caught. A wee bit of bother getting the hook out the first one, so we dealt with him first. We'll get him straight back. Having fun? So cold. So cold, but we are immediately into fish. We've come to the first mark. Deep water mark. 200 feet or so. Gordon's had a Double shot of spurs. I think I might have another small spur. On here. But yeah, they're, they're definitely not big. <laughs> a start, but. Yeah, it is a start. This place can be can be funny. One day it'll fish its socks off and then the next day it'll be absolute garbage. So we'll take any fish we can, especially when it's as cold as it is just now. What we got? Double shot. <laughs> I think we're going to have a few of these today. This isn't going to be easy today, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I'm back. Everything's frozen and breaking, the phones and the mics, everything are not working. I don't know what kind of video we're going to get today. So those in England that can't understand me, tough. <laughs> I don't think I understood them there. I have absolutely no idea what you said. <laughs> uh, we're struggling a wee bit today. We're struggling with our fingers. We're struggling with phones. We're struggling with everything. But we're catching fish. That's the main thing, I suppose. But it's not going to be easy today in terms of filming. So it might not be the best video. But we'll give it a right good go. Hopefully it'll get a wee bit... A wee bit more mild later on. We might have to go and find the sun. We're sitting in the shade of a mountain just now. Uh, we might need to move just to get a bit of warmth. But we're on Etiv. We're on Loch Etiv. We're out with TFC Boats. So if you don't know about TFC Boats, check them out on social media. Uh, Doug Bannantyne is the man that you want to get in touch with. And he hires out Orkneys. And the boat that we're on just now is a Maryland. And it's, it's great. It's kitted out with a, an 18 horsepower engine. It shifts, it gets you up the loch quite quickly. And it gets you to places like this, deep water marks like this, where the majority of fish are going to catch are fairly small. The small spurs that we've seen already. But there's the chance of something a wee bit bigger. There's some nice big ling in here. There's some decent spurs, double figure spurs. 
There's codling, there's pollock, there's rays, there's dogfish. There's even skate. So you just don't know. But let's see how today goes. We'll, we'll try our best, but it's, it's tough in these cold conditions. At least minus five this morning. It's not much milder now, but... Yeah. You do realise the longer you're talking, the more colder my horns get. We'll catch some fish. I always think these etish dogfish look slightly better marked than others. I know they do taste good, but <laughs> we'll put this one back. That is cold. Another mic. If the mic, the sound starts changing, it'll be windy and non windy. The mic, it's the coals playing havoc with it. It's no, it's no good. Um, plus, Alex is a bit of a guy with a light in the cold wind and he's just his fingers. We try to try and catch some other than spud dogs. I think we might maybe see how we go here, maybe another half hour. Maybe move, see if we can find something else. At least we're all us fishing and catching get done here so we can always come back here later on. <sighs> They're a surprise. Oh, I've one in the bottom of my mouth. I'm fishing them up. One up, one down to us. That's one up. down I think I've washed enough spots for the day well bigger ones would be good but just quickly to show you this is my wee budget boat rod and multiplier the Abu a GT345 LW no idea what that means but there's the up down one up one down sorry a foot and a half, a size 3 O hook, 5 ounce lead on a wee boom, and about 4 or 5 feet up. Same again, about a foot and a half trace on the up. I don't know how well Alex is getting that. But aye, it's been double hookups pretty much 90% of the time. As I say, we don't have a day in this already. I do want to try and find some bigger spurs, maybe some rays, and as Alex says earlier, some whiting or some codling or, or a bit of luck a ling, who knows. Uh, but we did catch something. <laughs> when Alex's fingers were only operating and the phone was playing up. This is a first for me in December. A mackerel. <laughs> 
So that might get us the line or a big spur, who knows? But that's going on now. Oh, and that water's cold, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> this is a line, it's a small one, but something tells me it's a spot. The last thing I caught here was just like a dead weight. This seems to be coming up pretty much similar to the other spot. Well, it's a nice spur. Better one. Last week, it's not even hooked. <laughs> There we go. Well, we look bigger than another big one I had earlier. Let her run. <laughs> Hold out the side. Oh, it's freezing. Right, we're getting back. That was probably the biggest spur of the day. But the run that it took, that's what drew our attention. But see, we lost that fish. Alex dealt with the telltale sign that it was a spur of if we'd lost it. Look at the bait, the bite mark. Hold That's what's left of that whole mackerel I showed. Hold the side on. A typical wee shark bite. But I reckon that'll pick off another one. I'm going to fish that on the bottom again. See if we can't get another one. Now they did say we were going to move, we're still in the same spot, but I think we'll probably give it another 20 minutes or something and then we'll be moving. It's got a wee bit warmer. Alex doesn't agree. <laughs> It's a fish. So we moved to Smurd Dogs, <laughs> to Dogfish. <laughs> That's the third one we've had here, I think we're going to move again. As Alex says, fish is fish. Hold them closer together. Mine's is the bigger one. <laughs> <laughs> yep, pa pack of dogs down there, let's go somewhere else.
I said earlier on that it's not going to plan. Definitely not going to plan. The bites have dried up completely now. At least earlier on, we were getting a few bites and there was a, there was a couple of fish to be had, but they've just disappeared. Unusual, really unusual for this place. We've had huge bags, well not huge bags, but really good bags of silvers from here in the past. And like I say, that usually fishes quite well with a bit of, a bit of colour. A bit too much colour, I think, today. It, it looked promising earlier on, but the the lighter it's got through the day, it's, you can actually see it's, it's, it's chocolate. It's, it's just too, too thick with sediment. Pike, pike don't like coloured water either. We've found that here, that once there's a bit of colour, the pike rods are just... They're, they're, they may as well be non-existent. And again, that's unusual for here because we've usually got pike smashing roach in the way in. You know, they usually falling us right up to the pier and turning away. It's usually alive with fish. Like peg, pike wise, we've had we've had fish to sixteen pounds take roach and actually manage to land them, which is fun, fun in games on a feeder rod. But it can be done. More often than not, they they let go at the last minute. But. I'm just reminiscing about time's gone by now. Because <laughs> nothing's happening today. We're contemplating. I don't even know what we're contemplating. Do we stick it out? Is it worth it? Nah, don't know. Is there any surprise where we ended up? Nah, I don't think so. I just hope the man behind the camera has looked up these weather forecasts in his defence to have been a bit all over the place. The other level is where we would expect it to be when planning a trip like this, but we've turned up and it's a wee bit higher than what we were expecting. Now Alex has went and checked the clarity. It looks clear, which as a bonus. If we'd have turned up here today with the height it is and it's dirty, would have been a disaster. And a puncture like one in the tyre in the car. So who knows what we're installed for the day. But we'll keep trying to get that three pound grayling. doesn't feel half bad. A lot of water here, so I'm going to get in tight to the shore. This one is taking off about 50 yards down to you, so I'm going to move in after it. It feels nice. I've seen that. In this water, anything feels nice.
I've more ash in my neck, but I had a lot of them. Who's your Alex, eh? It's not that big either. <laughs> it's not that quick looking then. Pretty deep, isn't it? Well, we've been fishing for about 10 15 minutes, and as Gordon said, when we first came down to the river, we were a wee bit, a wee bit worried. It's high, it's a lot higher than we've fished here before. Uh, and it made the difference when I hit that fish. It felt, it felt heavy in that flow, and it was quite tricky getting across as a kind of gully. Runs in between the, the bank here and a sort of a gravel bank that runs down the middle of this run. It was a wee bit hairy. A wee bit? A wee bit hairy. But we got there and we got the first fish of the day. It's not taking too long. Bear with me. He's definitely two pounds. Or she's definitely two pounds. Felt like four pounds in that flow. She's very lively. Yeah. There we go. But yeah, hairy stuff in that, that current. Like proper bank in it, isn't it? We'll get her recovered, a wee 40 and then back. Three or four. Aye, day. Go take photos of two pounders. <laughs> Grayling snub. The reason I'm standing over here is because I asked Alex <laughs> to tie a hook on for me whilst I got my waders on. The reason for that was there's a big hunt on and all the cars are piling in. So to get out the road, it's like a teamwork to get us down to the river, I went and hooked a fish and guess what? They're not failed. It makes you feel any better, I've just lost mine as well. <laughs> Alex is asking what time duties. Well, so far, so good to a degree. I've hooked two fish. Unfortunately, I lost them. So, if it does do one thing, it helps with the conference. The last few sessions haven't been great on the grayling of the roach and the pipe for that matter, so. It was good to feel a bend in the road. Hopefully, hopefully we'll, I'll land, I don't care about him. Hopefully I'll land one today. He's already had one. Um, but just to touch on a couple of questions that were asked. Uh, well, the same question was asked by a couple of folk. Was these bait bags, I believe they're designed for, for carp anglers, for their boilies. But we find them quite useful for the, for the maggots. It's supposed to be like one of their aprons. And folk have asked what mate, so it's Fox, Aquas, I believe is how you say the second part. So if I can find a link to it, I'll stick it in the description. Hopefully that helps a few out that are interested in, in their using such a thing. But we, we find that a great help. For how many times, a couple of years ago, I used to give me a maggot still in my pocket. <laughs> but I cross this is a wee bit higher today. So fingers crossed. Today's the day. Just for a fish, no, I don't care if it's one pound, two pound, or three pounds.
I don't see your face. I see what? I don't know if you were over there. Come here. Who pulls it up? Oh, yeah, we got back on that. Oh, it's not far off. That's a big thing. <laughs> I knew today driving down, this was going to happen. And do you know why? Because yesterday we were pike fishing. And you know what I'm going to say, don't you? The scales that we have for the pike fishing get soaked, get rusted, we gubbed. So we put the ribbon heating Grayling scales that we use, they got up to 26 pounds, but they're more accurate for the smaller fish. That, they're in the pike bag and we're doing, doing here fishing, which is no use to anybody. And I says to Alex, you know what's going to happen today, don't you? We're going to catch that fish that is close to the three pound. I think that's says three pound. The gentleman that's watching, he reckons it's three pound. Of course, Alex thinks it's just under. So, but it's definitely, it's the biggest grayling I've ever seen. Don't worry about the fin just now, just hold it with two hands. It's not had any damage to it, why do I keep it yeah, safe? Right. You can go in there and see if you kneel there. I can't kneel, I'm not like them, bolt at you. Look at that, look at its head up a touch. Get the fin on it. Is that a big nail? It's a nail. How's that look? Not the greatest light. I'm going to move you in a minute. That's got to be three in it. No worries, but fish in a week. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm buzzing an understatement. That's the longest. Biggest grail I've ever seen. Honestly, I'm not just saying that. Peter Finner, I'm like to Tell me we go first.
Well, it's only my second grailing of the season, but yeah, I don't think anything will ever beat that first one. But this is a, a wiry wee number. You don't need to see my ugly mug, I'll hold it here the net. Ah, on the Aventus float rod. To say this has made my year, these two fish is an understatement. <laughs> Thought the year was going to fizzle out to nothing. Well, we'll waste too much time, we'll get him back. Her, her. Yeah, I'm not sure. Male? Yeah, small male. Yeah. We suspected the river was rising, so we checked the phone, it's a good job it was, it was starting to, so it was just ready on the way up there, excuse me I need my inhaler, to get back to the car that was on this side, before we get stuck, how's that lie doing? So I think it's become quite apparent that we do enjoy our grayling fishing. We enjoy being in the water, in waders, trotting floats. But Gorn's just highlighted a really, really important point there uh, when it comes to wading, and when it comes to wading in rivers in particular. And to give you an example, where we've been fishing this morning is downstream and across from our only exit point back to the car. So when in situations like that, and generally in any situation when you're in the water, keep an eye on the conditions, keep an eye on the forecasts, and keep an eye on water levels in particular. It rained this morning. We were, we were a bit worried about it when we turned up this morning. We knew it had rained, so we suspected that the river might rise a little bit, and it did. So we checked it on the, the, the hydrograph on SEPA, SEPA's website, and it has, it has come up a little bit. And we decided it was time to bail out from where we were. Downstream and across is not where you want to be in high water conditions. So we did manage to batter our way up through this little bit of rapids here, which was manageable. It was manageable. However, in an hour's time, it might not have been. So always know your exit points, always know how you're going to get out of the river if you need to. And know your wading abilities as well, not everyone's overly confident in waders. <clears throat> you know, went a couple of times on the way up there. Uh, so yeah, know your wading ability and know your exit points. Keep an eye on the, the river conditions, the weather conditions, because even a three pound grayling isn't worth it. I is. <laughs>
take three. <laughs> it was going so well. Eventually, we've had an absolute nightmare of a run. The last three or four sessions have been terrible. And today started, started. just to pick up and, uh, and go in the right direction. Until lunchtime. Aye, flat tyre. Puncture. <laughs> so, the farmer came to our rescue, managed to get air in the tyre, get to the garage, air in the tyre, garage, air in the tyre, you get the gist. So, we're trying to make this quick, but we keep making an arse of this video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a shandy, by the way, that's not a pint, he's, he's having a pint. Uh, but we just wanted to recap the, the session and overall the year. That was already a three. I reckon it was a little over. I think I think you're right. I don't know about over, but it's definitely three or thereabouts. Two pounds sixteen. Two pounds sixteen. <laughs> we're going to call it. I think. Uh, uh, can't be called it three pounds without actually weighing it. So I uh, two pounds sixteen ounces. Uh, it's, yeah, different fishing, different bags for different days out. The scales get left in the pink bag. And that's only because the actual pint scales are gubbed, which is a, on the Christmas list, wish list. But highlight of the year, but a tough one, we've been talking about this a couple of times driving home. What's your kind of highlight? Uh, it's always hard to pick one, I've said it before. But looking back, I've had some nice fish and some nice trips. I mean, the trip down to the Trent is always, is always a good one. Some nice fish on the last the last trip down there. I got that. a few PBs there, I think. Aye, big brain. Mentioned that in the last video. <laughs> big brain with a big chub, which was great. Uh, got some got a nice pike earlier on as well, much to Gordon's disappointment. Honestly, see if I'd have caught that. <laughs> but I, I do have one one highlight that I'm gonna I'm gonna put top of the pile. Bye. Yours? I just think the overall year. It was always a an idea over the years doing this YouTube channel and for one reason or another we never ever took the plunge and went for it and I'm glad we did because this year's been the first complete no first full year sorry that we've managed to we've had a we've had our ups and downs we have had that nearly chucked it a couple of times but I'm glad glad we stuck with it highlight wise I, I've really really struggled to pick one one that sticks in, to, uh, sticks out sorry we know what's coming here the two the 204 all right all right that's, that's club, surprised me all right okay the big skate thanks to Ali for they promised us a the 200 club sticker and uh managed to get that but what a fight don't know if i can do that again and then obviously the man i've they're probably sick of the sight yet by now is the is the seed out? Ah, there it is. That's what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, no dash mask, cold weather. But the seed out again. That was one day, spur of the moment after work. And then bang, nobody there to savour the moment. Well, there was three guys there that just absolutely flung me a defy. <laughs> I could have been doing with their help, but and then obviously today, that came out of nowhere. My confidence was at. I think an all-time low, just nothing was going right. Blanking in the pipes, losing grail in the last session. Didn't even get a bite in the roach, I think I got one bite, didn't I? No. Just terrible, but to end, to end on that grailing was pretty special. But if I'm getting forced to pick just the one. Just the one. Sea trout. Not as much. Sorry. <laughs> Quite rightly so, I think. Yeah. Aye, definitely. What a fish that was. What a fight as well. Uh, my number one, probably not as exciting as the sea trout, and probably not that exciting to many people, but it's been a fish that I've been obsessed with for a while, and been stuck on a PB of £1.6 for years, so to finally break that with a fish of £1.9, huge fish, <laughs> £1.9 ounce, uh, is my roach, my PB roach from back in July. A fish that again, yeah, I've said it, not many people think too much about them, but there's just something about them for me, absolutely, absolutely love, so I, my highlight, uh, PB Roach. It takes a bit of skill to catch a down 12, but doesn't it? 
doesn't even merit a response. Gutted. See how gutted I am about not catching that bike? It's a role reversal. I wanted that bike and he wanted my roach. I'll get one. We will. You'll get one we'll as get well. One. I don't know, I don't know how long it'll take, but... But, I suppose to wrap up this, this video and this year, it's just to wish you a happy new year and all the best for 2024. And we'll see you next year. Cheers. Cheers. I hope that one recorded. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving here drunk. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Angling360 and welcome back to what is hopefully going to be a catch and cook video but a catch and cook video with a, a little bit of a difference because we're after well to be honest we're after anything that we can get it's just coming to the end of the year I think it's 29th of December or something like that, it's cold there's been storm after storm after storm and we've not really been able to get out much but not yeah, at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> but yeah, we're back up in the, the West Highlands in one of the sea locks. And yeah, fishing for anything. I do have my eye on some dab. That's that's my aim. I want to catch some dab. Because apparently, well not apparently, it's well known that they are a fantastic eating fish. Uh, and I've got a little recipe designed for, for dab. But we will, we will. We'll take anything. We'll take whiting. We'll take collies, pollock, codlin. Anything we can get today. We've been Go here on. for... Tell us the name of the dish. <coughs> I'll the name it is. <laughs> yeah, it's like a... It's a posh sort of frito misto de pesca. <laughs> uh, which is basically a mixed fried fish. Uh, so a mix of fish would be good. Dab, that's what I'm hold, holding out for. But yeah, a wee mix would be, would be ideal. We'll maybe do it with a little sort of lemon caper butter. If we catch a fish. Now to be honest, this video should have been on the back of a Loch Etiv trip. The Loch Etter trip was planned to be a catch and cook. We didn't really catch anything edible. Plenty of fish, but nothing really uh, worth making a catch and cook video out of. So, hopefully this time. Hopefully this time. The rod tips are bouncing around. They've been bouncing around for the last 20 minutes, but we've yet to hook anything. So, whatever is out there is obviously quite small. But bites are bites. Let's see how this goes. I said that I looked massive. Alex like, into us first. That's made by small Ray, first customer. And a dogfish. Is it edible? That's the key, that's the point of today. Find some food. I think it might have come off. Oh no, it's there. What have we got? It's definitely not a dab. Oh. A dab. That's a tiny, tiny thorn back roof. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. He's lovely. How cute is that? Oh. 
it's a fish, but I don't think he's I don't think he's lunch. What's the verdict? Uh, small, if anything. Bit of weight there, might be something. <laughs> what is this? Well, finally connected with one of the little rattly bites that we've been getting since we got here. And it is one of our target species, it is something that I was kind of hoping for. However, I don't think there's going to be much eating in this little guy. <laughs> that was a target or etive. We were after whiting. We got one. We do have a whiting. A little bit bigger than that one, but good eating fish. Underrated fish. Really, really good eating. However, something a wee bit bigger is needed. There you go. Two fish. Out view. Standing, isn't it? At least now we know what the little rattly bites are. There's a, a nursery, a whiting nursery out there, I think. There might be a bigger one amongst them, you never know. I've just a big slack liner on my other, other rod there, so let's have a look, see what's on that. Don't think this is a whiting yet. You see, it'll be a big whiting. It's a big whiting we're, we're in. I don't think so. Though. It's a dab. It's amazing how such a small fish can feel so heavy when they're flat. <laughs> a full hooked target species. Another target species. I'll turn around so you can see them. <laughs> There you go. That's what we're after. Dab. The legal size for dab's 23 centimetres. That's got a little bit of growing to do before it reaches 23, so we still don't have any lunch. Can I get my rod out now? So far he's hooked three on the lure and lost all three in the kelp. I don't know whether it's pollock or cod. Betting man says it's pollock. I still no caught a thing. There you go. I was hoping there was some of these kicking around. This is the first one I've landed. I've lost two. I've lost two much bigger fish. Uh, on the lure. The big rods have been a wee bit quiet and anything that does come on them is a bit small. So I thought I'll get the lure rod out, chuck it across the kelp beds, see if there's any cod or pollock about. He's a wee bit small so he'll go back. But I lost a big fish earlier so... Still a chance, there's still hope. I thought it was four you'd lost. <laughs> four? Aye. Probably not. Lights off! Another small pot. 
and a nice wee orange well bad news is still nothing for dinner keep going Oh, a thorn back there. Way too small. Here's my hook back. Absolutely cute as hell, not that size. Yeah, black. All I can say is I'm glad I bought my chicken wings at the shop. <laughs> so there's definitely plenty of fish about. Fish. Fish fingers. Far too small. Everything's far too small. I think our best chance of a, something of edible size might be the pollock. We've had a couple of small pollock on lures. I lost a couple of big ones, but they felt big on, on the lures. So, it might be worth plan C. Get the float out, strip a mackerel belly, and surely that will pick up a bigger pollock. We shall see. We know they're there. Let's give that a go. That's promising. I was bringing that in there to recast. Bang! The bait's gone, so there's fish there. I wonder if they might prefer the bait moving, so it might be worthwhile just twitching it about a wee bit. I need to get something to eat. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Still, the miniature fish <laughs> continue. He is cool, isn't he? Look at that. Lovely wee fish. But yeah, again, far too small. However, we did get something eventually. Had to deviate from the plan a little bit. The big ones haven't really produced anything, so the lure rod came out. And we finally managed to get a couple of decent pollock. So we're going to have a look at them, get them prepared, get them salted. We'll think about how we're going to cook them. The rod tips are still bouncing away, but we got our food eventually. Not what we're after, uh, but a nice looking pollock and we'll, we'll, we'll use it. I like pollock, however, I find them a little bit soft. The flesh is just a little bit, not a little bit soft. So what you need to do, or what I think you need to do before you, you cook it is fillet it and salt it. Salt it for at least an hour. Draws a little bit of the moisture out and it starts to kind of firm up the flesh a wee bit. So we'll get this guy filleted up, get him skinned, get him salted, 
and then we'll get the rest of the this dish organised. What's it called again? Frito. You can't see it very often. <laughs> Frito misto de pesca. Well, Frito misto de pollock. Because that's all we've got. Hey, pressure. I know. Not the best at filling, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. Clean that up in a second. It's always a bit of a struggle with. There is a way you can take it all off in one, but we've not mastered that yet. No, not quite. I can do it, but. And then the belly fat we don't really want, so that just gets. Some stuff. Wish I could do that with mine. <laughs> get that wee wash and I'll get the skin. I'll get the skin off just now. Hey, I need to see this. This is something I struggle with. Jam, may I laugh? No, just keep it on. It's good if you're frying, but to keep the skin on, huh? Eh, sometimes, yeah. I don't really like it. I like it on some fish, like, I like it on bass. Probably not the best board to use, but... Beautiful. Give that a clean up, get some salt in it. There we go, salted, left on a rack. I'll leave that for about, well, we're running out of daylight, so probably about 30 minutes. But we were a wee bit apprehensive as to how this was going to go today. It is the middle of winter, and sea fishing in the middle of winter can be a wee bit tricky. So we did come prepared. We got our pollock eventually, but just in case, we have Gordon's catch from a couple of weeks ago. Now we did mention earlier on that Etiv was supposed to be the catch and cook video. We did catch some fish on Etiv, not much. But I took these home, cleaned them up a little bit. What we have is Gordon's whiting. The whiting I think is probably one of the most underrated fish there is. It's fantastic, it's much firmer than the pollock, it's nice flaky flesh uh, and it'll work great. And this, and this is a dab. We went after dab today. Little dab that was deep hooked. We would have put it back, but we'll put it to good use. And that was filleted as well. Now, ideally, what we're looking to do today was to catch a few dab and, and fillet them because they are they're a wee bit finicky to fillet, and I think that puts a lot of people off. But they're fantastic eating fish. They're really, really, really good. So it's worth taking the time to get them, get them prepared. So we'll get them on there as well. Get those salted. And then we'll make a sauce, I think. We'll get the stuff, we'll get the sauce on. An easy element, look. Love it. <laughs> Fish and food. And then we'll get a bit of salt in there. Oh, that's that salt. I do forget, but 
What did we forget? Mm -hmm. Probably something, what did we forget? A beer. A beer, that would be nice. There we go, so that's our fish, sorted. Let's get, let's get a sauce on the go. You can cut there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got a question to ask you. All right. You got a lighter? I have matches, yes. <laughs> Do you have a lighter? In the car. In the car. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get the sauce ingredients. Sliced and diced, and we'll get them on. So well, well Gordon got the fire started. I got the, the sauce ingredients set up. So we got some thinly chopped red onion from the allotment, of course. Some chopped garlic, some capers, some chilli, some parsley. Uh, and we'll whack it all together with a bit of butter and it'll be fantastic. I hope. Never made it before, it might be. Huh? Never made this. Not made this once. Very <laughs> tell It'll be good. It'll be good. And some fine Scottish oak for the fire. All going to plan so far. There you go, sauce done. Well, partly done. We'll let it cool down and then we'll heat it up later on when we need it. But yeah, it's just a drizzle over the fish, that'll be tasty. So just chunk, chunking the fish up into sort of goujon sized pieces. Oh, that small pot. <laughs> so nice they fat in there. And then you rinse the salt off before we cook it. You don't want to, you need to rinse that salt off first. Because that fish has been salted, it's been sitting for about 30 minutes, 30 45 minutes. And what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to deep fry it in a sort of tempura batter. It is starting to get quite cold though, so I'm a wee bit concerned about how hot this oil is going to get. I think we'll do it over the fire because it's a wee bit hotter on the fire than these little stoves, so we'll give that a go. So, a bit of flour, I'm going to spice it up a bit with a bit of Cajun seasoning. So a bit of Cajun in there, a bit of salt. Give that a, combine that up, and then the trick I believe I've been told it's freezing cold. <laughs> it is freezing cold, soda water. We shall see. A little bit of time. I want it quite thin, I don't want a thick butter, you want a thin, light butter. That's thin. 
Yeah, we want it, we want it thin. We can thicken off of it, it doesn't work, we can, we can thicken it up, but I reckon that's good. Let's heat some oil up, hopefully. I'll get a fish on. We did think that it was heating this oil was going to be a challenge yeah, and it's turned out that we were right. <laughs> it's, starting to get, it's starting to get there, yeah, but we need it really hot because that fish is so thin that it cooks in seconds. We'll get there, we'll get there. So yeah, oil's on, batter's ready, fish is ready. We just need this oil to heat up and we're good. Starving. Moment of truth. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I think the trick here with this is you got to work fast. I can see that way over in fire. <laughs> <laughs> it works! Told you it would Happy with that. Getting worried there for a wee bit, I didn't think that was going to get hot enough, but now we're, we're, we're cooking, literally. What can I say? There we go. Huh? Look how happy he is with that. Tito Misto de Pesca. Fried fish. Fried fish. <laughs> Look at that. Don't trap it. Well that tough is with that. A thing of beauty. It's almost too good to eat. No, it's not. Let's go. <laughs> I think this is a bit of pork. 
Bonus petik tu Bonus petik Well done. That is fantastic. You are smaller. It's warmer than you expect, isn't it? That batter is just lovely. <laughs> so light, perfect. The occasion season is nice as well. Yeah, win. Happy. Oh, that one. Colours look. I paid 20 quid in a restaurant on Christmas Eve for that, and I'll tell you, it was half of that, <laughs> and it wasn't as good. Well done, mate. Let's go and get it finished. £1.50 a litre, provided as us with that meal. Alex caught the fish. I did catch one earlier. Had a few wee thorn back rays. We've had whiting. What else have we had? A dab. We did get yeah, a dab. We did get a dab, but it was too small. Um, and whilst we were preparing dinner, I put out a bigger bait to see if we could maybe. I don't know what I I know we weren't going to get one, a ling or a. Or even a dogfish. But that pollock and the other fish we had that totally finished. Um, I think I ate maybe more than I should have. <laughs> Absolutely stuffed. But I'm going to try and catch one. The tide is now coming in. And there is storm, storm get it that we've been having. This is the first I've been at the house since Christmas, I think. The weather, the wind, the rain, it scuppered the grayling, put an end to the pike fishing. And this, to be honest, is the first decent day that we've had. And it's been absolutely beautiful. We didn't get this good a weather when it was a summer session we had up here for the rats. She says, oh, yeah, that's <laughs> a, a baby thorn back, guaranteed. Monster dab. <laughs> there we go. If he was caught two hours ago, it would have been lunch. That fire's <laughs> still going. <laughs> that's a nice waiting. Lovely, and like I said, underrated fish for eating. So a wee bit bigger than that would, would be would be takeable. Uh, but yeah, nice one. You can go back. Alex is getting a battery in his 
his right leg though, he did in that flash. We got here. Oof. Supper. Still the fish keep coming. <laughs> we had an alright day actually. Let's be Paul to finish off. Again, it could have been lunch, but we'll get him back. Better <laughs> <laughs> luck we've got in his ass now. <laughs> Oh! Oh, it's got cold now. That's us, packed up, back at the car. It's like the frozen car, but we're back. That was all right, that wasn't bad. I was expecting it to be difficult being in the middle of winter. Uh, and the fact that we've never fished here in the winter before uh, gives us a, a bit of a kind of the unknown fear. But aye, we caught fish, loads and loads of small whiting. One dab, <laughs> probably not a dab hot spot. I think if we're going to go for dab again, which I think we should. Uh, we'll maybe head further up the loch because we, we do know a bit up there. But yeah, the park ended up saving the day. Gave us a bite to eat. Along with Gordon's dab and uh, whiting from, from Etiv. What else did we get today? A uh, couple of <laughs> thornback rays. Postage stamp sized thornback rays. Probably the cutest fish we've had today. Uh, and I finished off with a wee poor cod. I don't think we got it on camera, but a poor cod takes us up to five species. That whiting and pollock you got at the end. At the end there, aye, nice. It was nice to see a, a decent sized whiting. Not huge, but a decent sized whiting is always a, a nice fish to, to get. Uh, and a decent pollock again, right at the right at the death. I enjoyed that. Good lunch to go with it. That worked out better than I expected. I was a wee bit apprehensive with the, <laughs> with the cold weather. Still stuffed. <laughs> but it was good. It was good. So yeah. I think all that's left to say from Gordon and myself uh, is... I hope you all had a good new year. Although it's the 29th of December today, where we are, by the time this goes out, it will be it will be January. So we wish you all the best for 2024. Here, here. And tight lines. And we'll see you wherever we are next. <laughs>